Hey guys, Jeff here, back at Titan FPV. We got another project. We're gonna install the Crossfire Nano uh, receiver on our HDLRC Sector 5. Uh, and we're gonna bind it up to our Jumper T16 Pro. I have a Crossfire light module in the back and a JR Bay. We're gonna bind that, update the module, set up the model, and we'll go ahead and set that up in Betaflight. So we get up and running there, uh, completely switch over to Crossfire on the squad. Okay, already partially desoldered the XM Plus. Uh, we got a couple more things to do to set up the Crossfire Nano receiver there, okay? So uh, FR Sky receivers uh, are gonna use S-Bus, which is this yellow wire on the S-Bus pad. That's an inverted uh, signal. Generally for crossfire, you're just gonna run a normal signal there. So we're gonna move this wire, the S-Bus wire, we're gonna move this to the RX-1 pad. I'm also gonna solder up an additional uh, wire to the TX-1 pad. Um, that's gonna transmit the telemetry back to uh, the crossfire light. Uh, so we get telemetry and get all those notifications and um, link quality and whatnot. All right, as you see now, we've got the, uh, the yellow wire that was originally S-Bus uh, on the uh, XM Plus. We got that moved over to the RX-1 pad. And we add an additional wire for telemetry. So this is gonna be the channel two coming out of the crossfire. Uh, this is gonna be the TX-1 pad. So you always wanna make sure you match them up on the same UART. I'll show you that here in a little bit in Betaflight. In the configuration tab there in the ports tab we'll see, we'll make sure we'll enable uh, serial rx for uh, uart1 which it should already be enabled because we're using sbus on uh, uart1 as well but we'll double check that make sure that's set up right uh, on the crossfire nano uh, the receiver itself um, you can tell we've got the the bottom is going to be a square pad you can't see because it's got the uh, solder on there now but that's going to be the uh, ground pad uh, you got your five volt pad. Um, this is gonna be channel one, which we have to the uh, RX1, and then channel two for telemetry. That's going to the TX2 pad. Okay, let's get this uh, receiver bound up there. So we're gonna go ahead and connect the LiPo. All right, so a difference between Crossfire and FR Sky receivers. Uh, Crossfire generally goes into bind mode as soon as you connect uh, the LiPo to it. If it doesn't, uh, it's not a big deal. You don't have to hold the button down while you're powering the quad on. I know that's it's really annoying and difficult and a lot of times there when you try to hold the button down, the bind button on the receiver. Crossfire is different. Uh, it's a lot more user friendly. So it's in bind mode. We're gonna grab the radio here and we'll go into the system. We're gonna page over to the SD card contents. Uh, we'll scroll down to scripts. Uh, we're gonna go under tools, crossfire. And it's the first one, crossfire LUA. Execute that. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and set up the my uh, Jarabay module. It's got the Crossfire light. It's got all the features of the original uh, Crossfire, but uh, it doesn't have Bluetooth. So you're gonna get the full two watts of range if you need it. All right, so. So we're going to click that script again on the crosswire. Okay, we're going to select the light. All right, and we're going to go ahead and set, click on the bind button there. All right, as you see, the receiver's going red, and it gives us the option to upgrade, upgrade the so we're gonna go ahead and upgrade. So you hit enter. 
it's going to go ahead and update the firmware on the receiver for you. So I know I've never used R9 uh, long range uh, for Sky, but I know it's a big pain. A lot of people say to update the receiver, they have to make sure that the receiver and the transmitter are on the same firmware. But with Crossfire, it's uh, pretty straightforward there, and it's going to do it for you. So we'll go ahead and update that. see it's restarting the receiver and now it's binding RF signal critical. and you hear the telemetry warning so we can conclude that our receiver is bound we we'll go ahead and go back to the SD card Go back to tools, back to crossfire, and run the script again. And this time, as you see, there's not just the transmitter, there's also the receiver. So it's a nano, click on that one, let it populate. All right, so generally uh, you're gonna want uh, for uh, telemetry, you're gonna wanna change it from a channel to 12. You have telemetry uh, as on. And then, all right, you're going to want to make sure that the fail safe, you're going to set that to cut. Uh, so if you lose uh, signal, the quad just going to drop. You don't want any flyaways. Set that to cut. We're going to scroll down. And we're going to click on channel 12. You're going to change channel 12 to LQ for link quality. We're going to go ahead and hit the model tab. We're going to page over. We're going to scroll down. As you see, I've already got this one set up. And we're going to hit discover new sensors. jump into beta flight and get this set up. Right, we're gonna go over to the ports tab. All right, uh, so looks like the UR2 was previously configured for the XM Plus. We're gonna disable that. Go to our UR1, enable CRX for that, because the crossfire is connected to that. Save the reboot. We're going to go over to our configuration tab, scroll down, uh, we have serial based receiver, uh, so that's correct. Uh, previously we were using SBUS for FR Sky, we're going to select that one and we're going to switch to Crossfire, CRSF. I'm going to go ahead and save and reboot.
we're going to go to our receiver tab. Make sure our stick inputs are working. Y'all is working correctly. Roll. Looks like we're all good here. All right, let's go over to the modes tab and get our switches set up. So if you remember, we have the arm switch on aux channel one. Go ahead and select that one. We got the modes tab set up on aux three. So we're gonna go ahead and hit angle mode for that. I mean, you don't really have to do that if you just fly acro, but if you're a beginner, you're probably going to set up uh, aux and her or angle and horizon mode. So you're going to set those to the same. Drag the slider over. It's a three position switch. Uh, you can always check out the switches there uh, on your uh, transmitter to make sure they're working for us. Beeper is set to aux two. Uh, and then we have one more, which is the turtle mode or flip over after crash. We set that one to aux four. Those are the four switches that we're using. Go ahead and save that one. You can always check, make sure it, uh, that the potentiometer or the switch that you're using is working. Go ahead and give that a go if you want. Alright, looks like it's working great. We can go ahead and save and then we can exit. If you remember, we had to set up link quality on channel 12, that's going to be aux 8. See the fluctuate, well, it's measuring 2000, so if that's aux 8, we're going to set our RSSI channel to aux 8. Go ahead and hit save. We're going to go back to the setup page. And as you can see now, the RSSI is measuring correctly there at 100%, where it was 50 before. All right, we're back. I uh, got the top plate on, got it fully assembled. Um, I got the Crossfire Nano mounted underneath the VTX. That's where the XM Plus was. Hopefully we won't get any noise. This is a telemetry receiver, so it can cause noise uh, with your VTX, especially if it's nearby, but we'll see how that goes. Um, I did use the Immortal T on this build. Um, I guess the Immortal L, the uh, wire ant antenna, that's just the two wires. Um, I've used that in the past. I've had good results out of it. I used it on a micro on my uh, Diatone Cube 229. That uh, works great for me. Uh, this was just easier to mount uh, and deal with. And the Sector uh, 5 had already had this uh, mount TPU mount, uh, you can use it with the XM Plus uh, or Crossfire. So it's got the Immortal T mounted. You wanna make sure on those that you do mount it away from the carbon because um, it is conductive there and you won't get that uh, full signal. Uh, this isn't really optimal. I believe you're supposed to mount it vertical, um, but you know, most people fly on freestyle. This isn't a, long, isn't a long range rig, this is freestyle. So uh, most, I've had good experience, you know, mounting it kind of in this manner towards the back or um, some of my other builds I've got, I have it mounted on an arm. Uh, and then you just, uh, when you do that, you just take two zip ties and crisscross them uh, on the T on this part, the plastic. Um, but yeah, that's how I've got it mounted up. We'll see, I mean, I don't see it having any issues there. I'll probably run it on 25 milliwatt. Uh, I didn't have any problems on 10 milliwatt. So, I mean, I don't really go out, you know, over 500 meters really anyway, uh, where I've been flying here at my house. So, we'll see how that goes. But, yeah, I got it all buttoned up and uh, we'll give it a rip.